Hello, I'm Jonathan Smith, Head of Operational Development at Farnborough International Air Show 2016. Um, Five-day trade show, Monday to Friday. On the Friday we have the Futures Day, which although it's still a trade day, is uh, open to, we invite the, the youngsters in, obviously um, trying to get them into the engineering side of aviation, etc. So obviously that's, that's supported by a lot of the primes. So, and also this year we've got Tim Peake coming, so one of his first uh, public appearances since he came back to Earth. So that's really exciting. Um, we're having the Red Arrows around on Friday as well, and the F-35 pilot, so that's really looking exciting. Moving on now to the weekend, we have the public public weekend, Saturday, Sunday, um, where we open our doors to the to general public, having had the five days of trade. And uh, then we expect a you know, extravaganza with all the grandstand seating and the public attractions and all the public, normal public flying that people would expect. We're looking at um, in excess of sort of 50,000 a day at the public weekend and roughly anywhere between sort of 100, 150,000 people during the week for the, for the trade. We spent a long time building up the show. Monday uh, was the first day of the show already. Um, had a very, uh, very good morning uh, with the Prime Minister coming. Uh, to open the show and Richard Branson joined us on that same stage um, flying in and joining us from Virgin and then uh, the heavens decided to open on uh, Monday afternoon but obviously fortunately um, we have very very robust plans that we practice, we rehearse um, in May each year we have a, a main tabletop rehearsal and, and tabletop exercise where we bring together all the emergency services and all the our contractors and all our security services and the blue light emergency services and we rehearse and we have a scenario where we rehearse that fortunately um, I don't think we rehearsed a flood but obviously that was uh, I think we had 225 millimeters of rain in about 20 minutes so that was quite pretty extreme for anywhere but obviously everybody pulled together this the uh, the, the procedures worked a crisis management team was called and um, by Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, the show reopened and we were ready to go. What we have here, although we're building more infrastructure, permanent infrastructure, a lot of it is temporary. So what we first have to do is obviously, in theory, build the venue. It's not like an NEC where you can go there and it's the finished product. We have to build the infrastructure and, and, and certainly our, under CDM regs now, obviously that's more, has to be more robust. Um, although we've always operated under CDM in the, in the past um, at, at Farnborough, so it hasn't infected us too badly. But no, we start back in March De Boer were probably one of the first contractors in, building the halls and the chalets, putting in the IT, putting in the aircon, putting in the electrics, putting in the air conditioning, water. The whole site has to be uh, for the water safety plan, be activated. And then we look at the exhibitors moving in, probably beginning of June, um, and then the real crunch build up the last week of the show. So probably from about the 4th of July, we'd have had a real up to 10, 15,000 contractors on site. So we're building a small village which is why we have a medical centre on site, uh, shops, cafes, all that sort of thing on site for those for those exhibitors. Obviously many are overseas, many are away from home for weeks and months on end, so uh, it's a very busy place. I'm Dr Brian Robertson, the chairman of the Event Medicine Company, and we are the medical provider to the Farnborough International Air Show. The Event Medicine Company has been involved with Farnborough for the last seven shows as a business. I've been medical director of Farnborough for actually the last 12 shows, which is 20, 24 years. Our role here is the provision of high quality medical care to everybody involved in the event, from the event organisers through all the contractors um, and then the, the visitors to the exhibition themselves. And some of the challenges we have are based around the fact this is a major world international event, so we get many different nationalities. Um, some people bring us some challenges. They've been travelling the world and bring their problems with them and, and we will cope with anything that's presented to us. The length of time that we've been involved with Farmer International, we've got a lot of records of history of what we've done and the challenges are consistent show on show. So for example in 2014 we handled 538 people in the course of the entire um, event and that gives us a lot of planning potential. We, we know what we're going to expect, we know what staffing levels we need, equipment uh, and all those sort of things. And it's interesting how an event like this with its international clientele, we can predict the sort of incidents that we see. Languages can be a potential problem for us. I do some research before we start on the availability of interpreters. Farmer International themselves make interpreters available through their media organisation. 
uh, and my staff here in the medical centre simply have to phone up and we can get most of the, the main languages will come and help us and that's, that's important to us. We are very different from a music festival or something with camping um, and the, the type of incidents you see are very different. If you look at an event like this, most of our work is illness. It, it's people who are unwell um, with very, well, maybe pre-existing problems that they've had, exacerbations of things. The injury side is mainly during the build phase, when it's a building site. Now, as opposed to the festivals, where you've got all the elements of alcohol and things that go with the dance world, and it's a very different profile. And what we do is we can calculate. I do all my sums here on two per thousand patient contacts. So two per thousand crowd is what I work on. But when you look at a festival, it can be 20 per thousand. That's, that's the, the difference. One of our major roles is to make sure that the event medical service we have here doesn't impact on the local um, NHS resources. But to, in order to do that, you've got to have what I term the spectrum of care. So we've got doctors, nurses, paramedics, first aid staff, um, and obviously the logistic tail to put it all together. So on this site today, as, as you and I are talking now, I've got two doctors uh, in cars, two paramedics in cars, paramedic on a bicycle, four ambulances, and this medical centre we're sitting in. Um, this medical centre is staffed um, by five staff today, um, and we can cope with anything that is presented to us. When a patient arrives here, um, they are assessed as to do they actually need head-to-toe assessment or you know, are they, they seriously ill? And we have two resuscitation bays where we've got all the equipment we need to deal with the seriously ill. We've then got consulting rooms, we've got a treatment room where we can deal with all minor illness of one sort or another. And at the other end of this structure, we've got the ability to lie people down for a couple of hours if they need it. Um, for example, somebody might have a migraine, we've given them various drugs and they need to sleep them off before they perhaps get their coach home or, um, or whatever. So I like to think we've thought through all the options, we've thought through what sort of things can be pre presented to us and above all we've got the right skills to then deal with those. Yeah, we work hard at Farnborough to obviously create that Farnborough family uh, ambience. Um, we try not to change too many contractors at one go because obviously there is a strength in, in the knowledge. Um, one or two newer companies came in this time. Obviously um, we have a lot of established companies like DB Systems, GES, DeBoer, Vent Medicine Company, 2CL, Expo Flooring um, and many others. We had an app in 19, 2014, wasn't that successful and people started to drift away from do we need an app, do we, what do we want to do out of that. We set, reset the objectives about what we need and what, what does the client want, what do the exhibitors want, what do the visitors want. Bear in mind we have a, a trade show and a public show so we need to look at both, both objectives from that side. So yeah, working with event base, um, bringing in their expertise, working closely with them and also working with the likes of DB Systems on that as well, because for the first time we've put uh, Wi-Fi throughout the whole halls and the entrance area, which is quite a substantial investment in future from past shows. So working together with all our technology partners, um, we feel that we've really stepped up from previous years to offer a really, really nice offering now to, uh, to the exhibitor and the visitors. Hi, my name is Ben West and I'm the co-founder of Eventbase. We build apps for the world's largest, most complicated events. And I'm here at Farnborough Air Show, which is uh, one of our clients. We are always looking at new ways to solve problems uh, of large, complicated events. And one of the best ways we can do that is actually to come out to these events and live the experience ourselves. So seeing the scale of an event uh, of this complexity and size and being an attendee and navigating around really helps focus the efforts of how we're going to build out our technology, uh, what tools we're going to put in there so that we can help attendees in future years have an even better experience. Some of the more complex problems we have to solve for events of this scale uh, really come down to wayfinding. This event is massive. Uh, it's physically spread over a huge area. You've got a very large outdoor area with aircraft of varying sizes, and then you've got multiple halls, uh, and those halls are densely packed with exhibitors and so finding your way around that is quite difficult and daunting. 
So what we've done in the app this year is put in a variety of different maps depending on what you want to accomplish. And those include 3D maps, and the 3D maps allow you to see exactly where you are at the moment and where your destination is. So we can route you using turn-by-turn -turn directions to where you need to get to. We've even got outlines of the aircraft that are outside so you can locate the ones that you need to go. Say you want to find a Blackhawk or you're heading to uh, check out the Dreamliner, uh, we'll show you exactly how to get to that aircraft uh, as quickly as possible. One of the things that we've done at this event is use a combination of location services. Outdoors in this huge area, we're leveraging GPS to show people where they are, but indoors your GPS signal is obviously impeded uh, by the structure. So we've also kitted out all of the venues with a network of beacons, and these Bluetooth beacons help you locate yourself when you're indoors and don't have the benefit of GPS. And so we switch back and forth between those location systems depending on where you are and where you want to go. Those particular challenges are really important to solve for an event of this complexity because the user doesn't want to think about how the system is working. They just need to get to where they're going as quickly as possible, especially during the uh, trade show component of this event. Trade show component is full of very busy people. Uh, you've got large industry here, governments, military, they don't really have time to fuss around. They're here to make some pretty big purchasing decisions. They want to make sure they get it done as quickly as possible. One of the things that we do at EventBase is often have multiple events or event types housed inside a container app. So what we've done for the air show is put both the fun air show consumer facing portion of the event inside a container along with the industry portion of the event. So depending on what you're here to do, you can use the app for both of those purposes. So when insiders, industries, military, governments are here, they actually log into a separate portion of the app that has different functionality in it than what, will the, uh, what the public will see when they come here for the weekend to see the uh, acrobatics and displays. I think the reason that people come to events, uh, despite all this evolution of technology, is still to be with other people, be with like-minded individuals. And whether that's to conduct business, whether it's to network, or whether it's to share in uh, something that you're really passionate about. And so I see technology helping people make meaningful connections in a way that is serendipitous and efficient at the same time. And I think whether it's a consumer event or whether it's a trade show event, ultimately we want people to be able to find one another and enjoy that event together. And we think mobile applications are one of the best ways to accomplish that. Hi, I'm Jamie Vaughan. I'm the Managing Director of EMEA for EventBase. Um, pleased to be here at Farnborough Air Show today. We're running the official app. Uh, it's been a great journey for us and um, there's lots going on and lots to see here. It was a moment of serendipity actually that I, I met the, the Farnborough gang at a get together for event organisers um, and that led to me coming into pitch over here at Farnborough. Met the team, the sponsor team uh, and had a really open chat about what they're looking to achieve. Uh, and a few things um, apart from sponsor activations were mapping and um, the trade show element of this particular event. Organisers come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are very IT aware, run by millennials, some are not. Um, but they all have a common goal, which is bringing together the community. In this, in this particular uh, first week, the community are aviation professionals, and at the weekend it turns into aviation fans. So these guys have a, have a dual uh, direction to make sure they appease both parties. When, when we first get approached by an organiser, my job is to try and understand what they're really trying to achieve and apply elements of technology that helps them achieve that. So the, um, the business day, or the week, which is Monday to Friday, is very much about trade show, people meeting people, transactions, uh, and getting from A to B quickly. Uh, the public days, which are Saturday and Sunday, very much about supplying the public with the ability to enjoy what's actually going on here and being at the right place at the right time. I'm Adam Jones from Showplans and uh, we provide floor plan services for uh, Farnborough. Uh, we pretty much provide every service we, we have available to Farnborough, uh, starting from floor plan design to mark out, uh, mapping, 3D visuals uh, to help people guide themselves around the, the event. Uh, and we also provide our show hub service for the sales team to manage rebookings and sell the event. We've been working with Farnborough since uh, the 2014 show. We took over the event and basically rejigged everything, redesigned everything uh, around the event to make it more commercially viable. Uh, we increased sellable space uh, by just over £1 million. Um, we improved the visitor flow in general as well. We straightened up the aisles. Uh, 
improved the flow and, and made it busy pretty much everywhere. So uh, we attempted to reduce the quiet areas within the event. After we develop the best floor plan that they can get, optimizing space and flow, uh, we want to then pass over the, the day to day work to the organizer so they can be responsive with sales and quick with sales so they manage their own floor plan themselves using our show hub service. Um, that allows them to make bookings instantly and for the for the actual exhibitor to see, right, I'm on that plan, I'm, I'm, I'm already allocated to a stand. Um, so it's helped them pre-show, during the show, they, they use it to, to sell on site. Um, the first time they'd done on site rebookings was in 2014 and they had a 60% rebook rate and that was all pretty much helped with Show Hub. When we were on site at Farnborough, we're working on a, a number of different facets. So mainly the halls are, are, are set, um, but outside there's lots of aircraft movements. So the exhibits, the aircraft exhibits that are there now will be different tomorrow. So there's aircraft coming in, leaving, uh, aircraft movements. So someone will want to move from one area to another. And these aren't small exhibits, these are Airbus A380s and you have to move things to move move other things and you have to get the correct timing so not everything can come in in the same order so all of those day-to-day -day sort of aircraft movements need to be planned and, and, and mapped out as well so our day-to-day -day, uh, workload is, is, is pretty pretty busy. The event's evolving um, there, there's different changes that come into place um, Farnborough the, the hall we're in now currently it's a temporary structure but they're building a, a permanent hall so we'll be working with them to uh, get the best possible layout within that permanent structure there's also regulations new regulations uh, for, for safety outside which have meant that the, the actual usable space outside is reduced to allow more of a safety barrier between the aircraft display and the and the audience um, so we had to update the layout to to actually factor in those safety matters whilst at the same time not losing any commercial space um, and, and keeping the profitability of the event up. So I'm Ryan Walker, I'm uh, the Managing Director of Smart AV. Um, we are here today and have been here for a good few weeks now delivering the AV across the, pretty much the whole show, providing conference equipment for the organiser. They've got sort of six or seven conference rooms, they've got um, press releases going on throughout the entire show. We are the official AV supplier to the show, so we have six containers worth of AV kit. Uh, we have probably something in the region of 70 technicians on site, a team of about 10 different project managers. Most of them have been here for at least two, some, some three weeks, laying the network, laying the cables, um, all to make the show what it is today and what it's been so far this week and what it will be for the rest of the week. One of the best things for us about this show is that we're able to facilitate pretty much the whole thing, probably 90% out of our, our own kit, um, which means that we can keep good control of it, we know what we're delivering to our clients. We have been able to offer to every single exhibitor um, the opportunity to have the live feed of the air flying display um, directly in their chalets, in their pavilions and meeting rooms. Um, so we have been able to capture the, the feed from the, uh, the camera guys and send it to anywhere that's on the network across the whole of the show. So the show today um, is, is totally different to what it was two years, four years, six years ago. You know, two years ago you'd see video walls everywhere, single screens here and there, um, all in HD, that was about the best you could get. Our smaller screens are now all 4K and the video walls have been uh, replaced with um, LED walls of all different shapes and sizes. Um, we've got curved LED, flex LED. The whole show for us is, um, is LED crazy and this is how the market's gone and this is really where Smart AV uh, specialises these days and where we have the stocks ourselves to really be able to support the biggest and, and best clients at this show. d Systems have worked with Farnborough uh, since 2006. Um, we initially started a relationship about a sales lead management system but since then developed our relationship into doing a full CRM ERP system that now is fed by multiple data feeds from web, access control um, and now third party uh, APIs with uh, things like event apps and exhibitor data transfer which means basically from a data hub point of view we're, we're the kind of heartbeat of, of, of what's going on here. The relationship with uh, D2I and Farnborough starts really uh, six months out where we, we start to collect the data 
um, that then leads into actually having to come on site um, six weeks out where we start building infrastructure phase by phase to be able to uh, build the access control systems in first starting with the contractors where we've got uh, in excess of 14,000 contractors coming in that need to be photo badge security checked um, to come and come and go into certain zones within within the site that then moves on to an exhibitor build-up where we have access control for things like badging, um, hall control and then also uh, parking um, and vehicle access. So uh, the system's basically controlling all of that from day one so that um, those coming and going uh, are not access accessing areas that they shouldn't be and also it's, it's giving the numbers to show control that need to know how many people are on site and where they, they are at, at any given time. D2I, uh, from a security point of view, um, have the ability to, to um, add, accept, accept and reject rules so that the security team can actually take them to one side and deal with that situation before it becomes a problem. The key is, is the data and it's uh, an algorithm that basically looks for known items. Uh, a common one in shows like Farnborough is embargoed countries, but then also it can, it can link into known email addresses and known uh, specific names. So when the public come in, D2I still play a role. It's, it's, it's a little bit less because it, the, the site becomes a bit more free-flowing. Uh, but we still report uh, the figures uh, in terms of where that is. I mean, the key thing there with things like um, operations is really which gates are, are being utilised the most um, and therefore how many people are kind of flowing through that. Um, and from a marketing point of view, also just reporting the numbers so that they know um, really how successfully the show's gone and the campaigns. So integration uh, currently uh, with third-party companies like uh, Eventbase, where we're transferring uh, products and services, almost the products and service uh, locator into their app. So we're collecting that information through our web portals, our, our exhibitor network, into our centralised database that Farnborough can view, and then pushing that back out to, to Eventbase. So D2I's core product, isn't just about the show. Um, the core CRM has a sales lead management module, an operations module, marketing module. Basically the cycle starts again uh, and the sales pattern starts again so it's 24 7 365 um, and the sales team will already be building their campaign for the next show into it. Looking at what we do operationally and how we use technology as far as to assist us in the operations team, obviously the project planning is right from the base, that's our bible both from an event organiser and for contractors. Obviously all our contractor um, its information and build schedules all go into a, a technology project plan which is all online, it's all shared with um, the input from our contractors. And then moving on, when we move into our show control, we have, we bought in this year a new smart board, we're using a new logging system from Everbridge, um, we're using what three words um, with, the, with the assistance of iEarth as well as far as putting in a, we, we took a uh, one week ago before the show we took a, uh, a satellite image of the site with all the temporary structures in place and that is now used for the emergency planning and our operational basis to track around site. SEVA Logistics brought in a new APNR uh, camera system regarding tracking all vehicles on site as far as when they are they are bringing deliveries so they can track and we can know where they are and, and what they're doing at all times. CTV, we've extended, working with uh, mobile CCTV, we've extended the coverage. Um, we've, we've brought in new cameras, particularly on the inside of the halls, to help and track, again, from a security and a logistics perspective. So, and then moving on to communications as far as radios, we've invested in the, in the most up-to-date technology. We've invested in new repeater systems, obviously a very large site covering an awful lot of distance. Um, all the flying area that we have to cover all has to be covered by the, by the radio network. And also then working with the likes of Vodafone and O2, which again has been a challenge in the past. They've worked very successfully with us this year, We're working jointly together, putting up joint masts. We've brought on four additional masts this year, and that has obviously also assisted in the communications which obviously everybody looks at when they come to a show of this stature. Farber International own and operate the show as we do with and also assist with other shows as well. Obviously we successfully run the Bahrain International Air Show. We have just signed a, an agreement at this year's air show about a new show in Turkey um, and we've extended said, our agreement with, with Bahrain. The show we, we have a we're all in-house we don't have any production companies it's all Farber International employees. Yes we do boister them with um, consultants and existing. But we work very closely, I think, the success story is I think we work closely with our, our uh, support 
contractors, our suppliers, our partners, who are an extension of our operations team. You know, we couldn't afford to carry uh, a team of that size for, for a two-year period in between shows. So we use our suppliers, and that's why we've got a very, very strong sort of Farnborough family ethos. The airport is, is owned and operated by TAG. It's a private business jet airport. There's no cargo, there's no public. It's all very much VIPs. Um, anybody who's anybody operates out of there. It's uh, no scheduled flights, so they can able to operate, which is obviously is, is the big, big attraction um, to a lot of overseas VIPs. Um, and obviously then they work very closely with us uh, every two years for the air show. There's three or four large hotels within two minutes drive. Um, I think we're up to two and a half thousand beds within a 50 minute um, radius. So yes, I think as we build business, hopefully then they will chicken egg situation. There will be plans. There's already plans for another hotel locally. And I'm sure that will happen as and when we create business. Farnborough is a very busy area anyway, um, without us creating more work. So there's already an appetite for more hotel space. So I think hopefully we'll add to that, and uh, that will bring in the the because the type of events we're we're looking for certainly the meeting conference type new events. Um, we'll obviously need that need that accommodation beds. As far as bringing events to Farnborough, they've always everybody's been very supportive of Farnborough the air show. It's a two year cycle. One, being an air show, it's fantastic because they can sit in their gardens and watch and have a barbecue and watch the free. It's, it's obviously has massive economic impact in the locality. Yes, it causes slight traffic issues for a very short period of time, but there's massive economic impact. They all, they all do very well out of all the shops, the bars, the pubs, the dry cleaners, everybody, garages. They all do very well out of us. And also, bear in mind, it's not just the show. You know, we have a probably a three, four, nearly, nearly five-month period of build. As we build the exhibition uh, business as well, that will obviously grow as well, so it won't just be the air show. So economically, there is a trade-off there. And, and I have to say, majority, yes, there is a few people that you know, will always object about something, but majority are so positive about it, um, which is really pleasing then. You know when it was announced and I spent a lot of time talking to stakeholders and going around the area talking to residents talking to local businesses and they all and there are there are even local blue chip business uh, companies that moved in who it wasn't the only reason they moved in but one of the reasons was is they could see this area becoming the place to be um, and not to move away they actually want to move closer to to Farnborough. We're always looking ahead um, always looking ahead, always listening to our exhibitors, always looking to, you know, what can we do better? We're always very proud of what we do as best practice as far as operation. You know, and, you know, Farm Air Show is always seen as cutting edge as far as, as, as air shows. So we need to provide them with cutting edge facilities and, and, and product. Hence why I touched on the likes of the Wi-Fi and some of the technology screens and that side of things we provide. So I suppose one of the biggest things now is that we'll go hand in glove with the new venue. So obviously we will be providing in 2018 a state-of-the-art iconic conference venue, um, second to none in the, in the country. Then we'll start looking at uh, additional um, hard standing and space and facilities for the, for the planes to make things a lot easier. Obviously people want to bring their planes closer and they want to do things. Th we were actually embarrassed this year with almost too many planes and we almost had to run out of room. Um, I'm sure you've you've seen on site many many of the large Antonoffs and Boeings and Airbuses and that they take up a lot of space, um, but they are very large clients and we want to try and accommodate as many planes as possible. There's a big challenge when it comes to entrances, landscaping, which is all an ongoing and annual capex budget which exceeds millions. Um, yes, it's fantastic news that we've got the funding agreement and the planning permission to build the new Farnborough Exhibition and Conference Centre which we're very excited about. It's obviously going to take the air show, not just the air show, but it's going to take this as a serious player in the venue market. We're only 35, 37 minutes from London, from Waterloo. Um, so communications are very, very quick. And as I said, and all things are looking great. And so we're getting some, we've already got some existing bookings. We're obviously building on that on pipeline work. So we're all ready. And obviously we hope when we will be finished 2017, ready for some of our existing exhibitions to move in in the spring of 2018, ready for a real proper, proper opening in 2018 for the Farnborough Air Show.